So we can all agree New Zealand is a pretty great place, right? But everywhere has its issues and everywhere has its problems. And one of the problems that is currently facing New Zealand is bovine tuberculosis. So bovine TB is a respiratory disease that can prove fatal to humans. It's transmitted into our system by the consumption of infected cattle products. So here we have our first issue, right? People aren't going to want to consume something that could possibly kill them. Our second issue is that the dairy industry brings in $14 billion annually to New Zealand. But as a result of the presence of TB in our country, Australia refused to buy cattle products from us. So here's our second issue, that our number one trading partner refuses to trade these products with us because of the presence of this. And then our third issue is, of course, the answer to TB that we currently have, which is the elimination of entire herds should even one cow prove to be infected with TB, therefore ruining the livelihoods of farmers all over New Zealand. So as you can imagine, it's become somewhat of a government priority to remove TB from our country. But how do we have tuberculosis, bovine tuberculosis in our country in the first place? The answer, possums. So every year we spend $80 million in order to wipe these out. And all this really presents itself as is the nailing of colorful plastic boxes to trees and the dropping of 1080 from helicopters, effectively using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. And according to this strategy, possums should have been eliminated by 2003. But here we are, 14 years later, and we still have massive issues with possums, with bovine tuberculosis in our country. So I think it's time to change our game. And my answer to this is at the forefront of scientific innovation. Let me introduce you to CRISPR-Cas9. So CRISPR-Cas9 comes from the immune system of bacteria, and it comes in two parts, right? Our first half is CRISPR, which stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Palindromic Repeats. So you can understand why that's been abbreviated. <laughs> CRISPR looks something like this. What it really operates as is a rogues gallery of all of the viruses that the bacteria has encountered previously. It remembers these and stores sections of their DNA after it's defeated so it can recognize them should they encounter it again. When it encounters them again, Cas9 is released and what this does is it pairs with a section of guided RNA which is taken from the data banks of CRISPR and it seeks out these viruses that it's encountered before, somewhat like a guided missile. When it finds them, it cuts out the matching section of DNA with, which matches with the guide RNA paired with CRISPR and it removes it from the virus. This kills the virus. But what we're looking to is we're not actually looking to kill it and in organism two chromosomes it wouldn't kill it. What it'll do is it'll trigger the repair process. And here's the really cool part. What scientists have found a way to do is overlay new, a new set of DNA, a new trait onto this repair process. So what it does, instead of just removing the trait altogether, it replaces it with one that we, that the scientists want to see. So. This means that this new organism displays a new trait, but we don't want to change just one organism, right? We want to change an entire species, somewhat like a domino effect. So what, Chris, what scientists can do is they can use CRISPR-Cas9 as a gene drive. This usurps the 50-50 inheritance rules that we usually see in nature. By injecting CRISPR-Cas9 into the germline, it changes both of the chromosomes within the organism. As, and then CRISPR-Cas9 writes itself into the genome as well, which means that not only is this new trait always passed on to the offspring of the altered specimen, but also CRISPR-Cas9 is, so it can work its magic in that new generation and every generation following. So as you can see from this diagram, something looks kind of different. So the blue mosquitoes are male, the green ones are female, and this represents an experiment that was done a couple of years back. They decided that they'd alter the mosquitoes so only male offspring could be produced right. And as you can see, every single generation where an altered spe specimen made contact with an unaltered specimen, only a male offspring was produced. Now this got to the point where the population crashed and it got wiped out. So imagine if we apply this to possums, it'll get to the point where the possum, where the number of male possums to female possums will, at, will be so high that the population will be unsustainable and it will crash. So at this point we're not looking, so that point, possums and TB are removed from New Zealand. But it's not just a lack of TB that we will benefit from. We also benefit from things like the kiwi from our general native birds, which have been in decline since the introduction of pests into New Zealand, will start coming back as we start seeing a decrease in the numbers of pests. And general other environmental issues will be uh, you know, better off as a result of these lack of these introduced pests. You can also see it being used for general medical purposes. They've already shown that CRISPR-Cas9 can be used to combat leukemia, which of course we all know as blood cancer, which we can all agree is a terrible, terrible thing. And CRISPR-Cas9 helps us to combat this. So if it is so good, why aren't we using it? Why isn't it already in New Zealand? So the number one barrier is, of course, it's an emerging technology, and it's not fully understood. And no one in their right mind would release an unknown, uh, an unknown quantity into our ecosystem without fully understanding what it'll do. So, what, but once it, is, once it is fully developed, what, what barriers stand in the way then? 
The next barrier is our kind of G-free image that New Zealand has. But at the point where we eliminate possums, we start to see that this general aversion that New Zealanders have towards genetic modification may change. If we show that, yes, we can use genetic modification to you know, solve this issue, which has been a plague on New Zealand for generations, then we can start a conversation that can bring about a change in the societal norms towards genetic modification. And in my opinion, that is a brilliant thing. And then, of course, our last issue is Australians. As we know, <laughs> possums are a protected species in Australia. And as we know, a lot of shipping containers come back and forth between New Zealand and Australia. And if some of our genetically modified possums make their way to Australia, and we start killing off the Australian possums which protect it, it's not going to matter that they are now able to buy our product through a lack of TB. They're just simply not going to want to as we kill off their favourite species. But irrelevant of all of these, all of these, uh, irrelevant of the cons, I believe that the pros outweigh them. We have environmental, we have medical, we have economical, and we have social benefits that we see from the use of CRISPR-Cas9 to eliminate possums, and then its application in other fields. So with CRISPR-Cas9, the, the possibilities really are endless. Thank you. <laughs>